All right. Hello. Um, thank you for thank you for joining FTC Three in the Wild. I'm Eugene Sorensen, Chief Product Officer uh, for Cosaic, and it's great to be back here in London after almost a three-year absence. Uh, so, and this is uh, I'm Rob Friends. I'm Product Director at Symphony. Thank you. So, uh, what we want to do? Uh, quick agenda. Just run through. Quick intro on FTC3. If you guys aren't aren't uh, available, then we're going to give a live demo of FTC3 actually in production environment, uh, and then uh, we'll circle up with uh, a couple other use cases and uh, some of the things where of of the challenges and that, that we encountered uh, in this project. Uh, so let's, next slide. There we go. All right. So I thought just for a quick moment we would read through the, the charter as a product guy. I think it's always good to make sure you know what your vision is. Where are you headed? Uh, so the financial desktop connectivity and collaboration consortium is to develop specific protocols and taxonomies to advance the ability of desktop applications in financial workflows to interoperate in a plug and play fashion without prior bilateral agreements, right? And I think that plug and play piece is really key. That's where we need to get to uh, so that it becomes really fast and easy to build the best of breed desktop uh, that all, all of our clients need. And next slide. All right, so what is FTC3? So core components of it, uh, context data. Those are your, your nouns, the things that describe it, right? All that metadata uh, that you think about when we think about a position, a person, right? Uh, that's, that's what we need to transmit from one app uh, to the other, right? The intents are the actions, your verbs, right? I want to launch a chart, I want to launch a chat, I need to send a message. Uh, those are the intents, right? The application directory, right? We're all out here building apps, um, so, and multiple apps, so where do I find them? How are they defined? They need to have a standardized method of, of describing them and finding them so that it's easy to use. And ideally, we're going to have multiple app directories, but we'll come to that point later. All of these things are tied together uh, by an API, uh, the Desktop Agent API. And if we'll click. Um, so there are several desktop agents uh, out there available today. Uh, of course, at Cosaic, we have uh, Fensemble, which we're quite proud of, uh, uh, Glue42, OpenFin, also commercial commercially available solutions that you can use as your desktop agent to facilitate this interoperability. Uh, the FDC3 desktop agent is a, a plugin, a browser plugin, and we just uh, had last quarter released uh, the FDC3 Electron, which is an open source version of a desktop agent. Uh, so a lot of tools out there for you to build your, your smart desktop solutions. And next slide. So I've broken down who's using FTC3 sort of into four categories. The first was the group on the last page of desktop agents. Then we have the financial service companies who have actively been invested. Uh, we highlighted some of these before. Then there's the app teams, right? These are the, the uh, firms that, that are building apps, uh, the best of breed apps that you want to plug in uh, to, uh, to your smart desktop. And this is where FTC3 really allows it to be uh, that plug and play experience. And next slide. And then uh, supporting this transition, right? The agents of change. Uh, so if you want to uh, implement uh, an FTC3 project, you want to transform uh, part of the digital transformation, transform your app stack, uh, then uh, Adaptive, Reformist, Normans and Sons, Scott Logic have all been active participants, and we thank them all for what they do. We work closely with all of these firms uh, to help our clients uh, implement uh, their, their desktops and build out their applications to leverage uh, FDC3. Um, now with that, we'll, I'll pass it over to, to Rob to talk through a uh, use case of as, as why we're all here, to, to see it. Let's see this thing actually see work. see in action, exactly. All right. Um, quick show of hands. How many people here have been or are a trader? None. How many people? Oh, was that half? No, none. Anyone been a salesperson? At a bank? No. One. All right. So I'm in a relatively safe space here then. Uh, that's good. So um, this example that we're going to go through, this is something that we did at a, a Symphony um, event a couple of months back. The workflow is meant to be a buy-side trader. So this, you know, I played the, the role of the buy-side trader in FX. Uh, very busy person. I make lots of money. I don't have time for any idiots. And I want my desktop to be really smart and fast. That's the, the basic concept 
if you've ever met a trader before, been lucky enough to meet one of those, you'll probably recognize those traits in how they behave. Time is money, and I want to make lots of money. Um, so what we've got here, so um, we talked about the desktop agent. So what we've got, we've got four applications and a desktop agent, and they're all going to interact together. And I'll just talk you through the, the workflow, and you can kind of see what you can do with FTC3. So what we've got on the screen up there, we've got a blotter on the top left. So that's where my trades, so that'll be my firm's blotter. Uh, over here, and it's all a bit squished because normally, you know, I'm a, I'm a really important trader. I'd have six screens in front of me. I wouldn't be doing this on one laptop because I'm really, you know, big screens. Um, so I've got a blotter here. I've got my chat platform, Symphony, and we'll show you a few other things. So what uh, Pierre here is, is running things so that I can be hands-free. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, imagine I just traded uh, sterling dollar yesterday. So if I'm a good trader, I'd be looking at how I performed and how well I've done. So we're going to put in GBP USD up there. Thank you. Uh, and I, I just want to see how some of these trades that I did yesterday performed. So first thing that's going to happen if uh, you just click on the Chart IQ little widget there. So the blotter is my in-house application. Chart IQ is a third-party charting app. And we just clicked on the button and magically uh, the Chart IQ chart came up. Um, now, what happened behind the scenes, we'll talk about in a second. But essentially, as a user, I love that because I clicked on it. The context got passed over. It loaded the security. It loaded the time frame. Uh, it showed me the orders I was interested in. And I didn't really have to do anything apart from click a button. So as a user, love it. Um, so what we're going to do is, uh, if we click through this, these little pink dots here, they're the executions that I did yesterday. So if we just look through that, Pierre, thank you. Um, so you can see we can click around the chart. Um, what this is telling me is there's some, some executions happened here. So these tiny little red dots are telling me that the trade actually occurred slightly off mid, slight, slightly worse than maybe I could have expected. So if I'm on the buy side, I'd be talking to my sell side about, well, what happened? Why, why is it that you didn't fill me at the right price where you were slightly off market? Um, <clears throat> So that's one application that's kind of talking FTC3 between these two. The other thing we have um, up here is a, a tool called Trade Feeder, which is a transaction cost analysis tool. So it analyzes how trades perform versus the market. So Pierre's just clicked on the TF thing there. Again, it's done the same thing. FTC3 talked across, passed the context, and wow, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, what we've got here is a nice little um, graphic showing you the, the, the circle is showing you where the uh, yesterday's algo performed overall. The red dot is the average performance, and it actually shows that um, yesterday that algo performed better than it did on average. So it's probably a good, a good day. But um, because I'm a buy side trader and very high maintenance for my sell side, I want to just make sure what's going on. So one of the things I can do is start to query that with my sell side. So client support uh, on the sales um, side of the, set of the bank. So Pierre, if you want to just share that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to share that chart using Symphony to kind of connect to the bank on the other end. So if you imagine there's somewhere, wherever they are, Barclays, Morgan Stanley, City, whoever it might be, uh, I can now send. And again, we just did one click from here over to here, and we've initiated a chat and embedded the FTC3 context and a little picture of the chart, and we can say, fields came in quicker than expected, or whatever it is that I'm asking about, and I can pass that context over to my sales coverage. Now, on their side, they may have a smart desktop too, and they'd be able to pick up that information that I've passed across in this message. So it's all a bit crushed because we're on a laptop, but you can imagine that this would be on one of my screens. Uh, and I can pass that across, and then they can pull that context out and, again, seamlessly move not only on my desktop seamlessly, but also across to another user's desktop. Um, and just to show you the other side of this, so uh, it can also work the other way around. So here I've got a chat where someone's passed me a, an instrument that they want to know about. Um, same thing Pierre can do here. He can hover over that view instrument, and you'll see up the top left. So Symphony and that blotter just interacted past the FTC3 instrument context across. And now it's filtered all my trades for Euro USD without me having to really do anything. So, as an end user, very cool. Um, and uh, yeah, huge amount of potential, I think, in FTC3 and Symphony working together. Yeah, right. I think, you know, the key thing here, right, all of these apps built with FTC3 APIs under the hood, right? Chart IQ, because uh, it's a second product. Actually, it's the first product. Uh, <laughs> Fensemble is the second product. Um, uh, you know, all, all written with those with those standards, uh, so it makes it very easy 
uh, to integrate and pass this together. And we're going to go through uh, two pieces that show you uh, a couple of tools that we've uh, got that, that make it easy to build a smart desktop uh, using FDC3. So the first piece that Pierre is going to bring up is something called the FDC3 Workbench. Uh, so this is a, uh, an open source project, uh, as, as Gab was talking about this morning, that uh, has been contributed. Uh, we worked uh, heavily on it, Cosaic uh, contributed to uh, the community. Um, and, um, and so it allowed, you know, because FTC3 is always about connectivity, you always have to have that communication, right? You know, if you're talking on a telephone, somebody's got to respond. That's what the workbench is designed to do, is to provide you that, that counterpoint application to work with. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to join a channel, right? So that's, uh, so that's we know uh, what, what line we're going to communicate across. So we join channel one, and it pops up with a little, a little note there. Uh, and then we're going to go over to context. And uh, we're going to go ahead and choose an instrument and uh, enter in um, your, uh, well, we've got, we've searched for euros, so we're going to search for sterling but again. So GBP USD um, will be entered in. Um, yeah. And then we're going to broadcast that to the, uh, to the OMS. The blotter. And there we are. Yeah, you both have to be on the same channel. Uh, and then we broadcast the context. Now also, you note that it shows you the, the syntax here, right, for the code. Um, there we go. Um, and those little copy buttons allow you to just copy that text you need for FTC3 and put it into your app, right? And then the third piece is an intent. Uh, so we're going to go to the intent tab. And in this case, we'll just launch a chart, view chart, and we are going to raise intent. And it's going to pop up and with, uh, with Sterling loaded, right? So um, this is the kind of workflow that, that you get from FDC3, and it makes it very easy to do so. Now, um, I'm going to, uh, we're going to go into something we call the Smart Desktop Designer at, at Cosaic. It's a product that we built that facilitates building out your desktop and, and makes it it's a GUI that allows a product manager, project manager, somebody to that effect, not a developer, could be a developer, but doesn't have to be a developer. Uh, it really, we're trying to you know, save the developer time so they can focus on the hard problems uh, to actually build out your, your desktop solution. Uh, so uh, you can see the different tabs we have across the side. We're gonna go to manage apps, right? And we're going to go ahead. So these are the apps that I've already got uh, in my system. And we're going to add one. We're going to add something, uh, a company called Era, uh, who provides, uh, they do, um, they capture live streaming events and do the transcription of those events, right? And they're capturing uh, more events than anybody else. Uh, so we've copied in the URL for that. And they have built their app using the FDC3 standard, right? Uh, and so then uh, we've put it in and we're going to add it and then we can launch that app. Right. And then we can go back to uh, the, the workbench or somewhere else. Yeah, the chart, Any, anything that's on the same channel, it doesn't matter. And we're going to type in Vox in this case. Um, And it searches for that. How long did it take ERA to stand up this app inside of, of Fensemble using the Workbench and FDC3, because they had already written for that, uh, and the Smart Desktop Designer? About four hours, right? So this is something, if you use this standard, it is plug and play. That is exactly the objective up front that we are after, right? Is we get more apps, right? You know, we had, you know, some 20 some apps uh, have registered, said yes, we're using FTC3. If we can get more apps doing this, this is when, uh, you know, it's, gonna, it's the, really the, the rising tide will lift all boats. It will help our entire community. Um, uh, we were just chatting with our friends at PICTE, used the term, you know, fix for the desktop. That's what FTC3 is. Um, all right, so 
Uh, Rob, we... Yeah, I think um, we were going to talk a little bit. I think Chris wanted to talk us to talk a little bit about kind of some of the challenges we faced when we did this. Um, so, um, you know, when you start to use these things in the wild, obviously that's when you kind of realize all the things you didn't think about. Um, one of the things we found, I guess, on the, on the start chat um, intent was that's great to start a chat, but what if it's an already existing chat room? Um, kind of obvious, but it was uh, something we had, to, uh, we had to add to it. The other thing I think you saw in the demo as we did that chart share into uh, Symfony, uh, we allowed people to put in some text and we had a little picture and all those things. Again, the original, the first version didn't really allow that. It was literally start a chat. Um, so, you know, a natural thing as you start talking to users is, I don't want to just start a chat with Pierre, I want to actually say something to him at the same time and probably share something with him. Um, so all those kinds of things are getting worked out as we start to use this for real in the wild and obviously that will feed into um, Chris and the, the next version of the standards, but the more people that do that, the more we'll find these things and we'll get a more refined um, standard that's, that's good for everyone. Um, so I think those are probably the, the key ones that we found uh, during this. I'm sure there's, there's a few you had on your, on your list. Uh, yeah, well, so, you know, if, if you go bring back up the workbench for just one second, right? So one of the things that you see in the workbench, right, is, uh, you know, that if you go into the context, right, so you can define your own. At the bottom it says create context, and you can define your own context and, and build this thing. And that's what Symphony had to do because it wasn't there in the standard, right? Uh, so it's great that you can do that, but then it lives for this application in this implementation of uh, the desktop. And so uh, this is where uh, we'll go on to back to the slides um, and talk about really sort of what are the things that, where do we need to take FDC3 and what, what is it that we need to uh, build out uh, to do? Um, so uh, let's go to the next slide. <coughs> right. So um, we need to uh, expand. Really, it's it's the there is a, a context and intense uh, data data working group, um, and that's the team that's really building out and defining the objects uh, that we need to pass back and forth, the actions that we need to take. It's great to see so many people here at this event today in this room, right? This is the kind of community that we need to have in that group because we don't know what that list is. And, and as, as you can see in the workbench, you know, there's what, a dozen? <laughs> a dozen or so contacts, a dozen or so intents, right? Um, we're all doing a lot more than that every day, right? Uh, and so this is what really has to be built out. And, um, you know, so if, if we can get more people participating in that and defining that, and raising their hand, saying, these are the actions that I need. These are the things that are part of my system and I need to share. Um, so uh, we need to, and, and to that, invoking uh, more actions uh, and a standardized message format, right? This is the point is, is, you know, we have too few and we need to really build that out uh, as we go. Did we, are many more added in 2.0? Oh yes, okay, but many more to go. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then we need a standard way to deploy these applications, right? So that, that uh, um, app D, as we call it, right, that's the, the key piece. And there should be uh, multiple app Ds where I can see all of these different uh, applications and, and all of the sub applications or all the different vendors. Each vendor would have an app D with all of their child apps within it, right? We showed ERA, they have a couple of different apps. Those need to be listed and discovered by the desktop agent uh, without thinking, right? It just plugs in, looks up, says, oh, I've got these five app Ds, uh, and it pulls in all of those. Uh, it allows the user to access any of those apps, right? And if we go to the next slide. All right, so this first point was, was exactly why Symphony yes. um, had to had to write their own context, right? Because uh, it's not a transaction. There's no uh, communication back and forth uh, in uh, in the standard in the 1.2 standard. Um, and so once you've sent it, it's send and forget, right? Um, that doesn't do so well. When I'm talking on the phone, I expect somebody to reply to to say yes. I expect Rob to say hello to me. Um, <laughs> 
not just me to talk at him, that's why I'm talking to you. <laughs> um, we need back-end processes to start using FDC3, right? Um, right now, everything that we're doing is on the desktop, as I said, you know, uh, fix for the desktop. But if the back-end starts using the FDC3 standards as well, uh, then that will simplify the work on the front end. It requires less translation, less uh, work for, for devs to, excuse me, for devs to map uh, from, uh, you know, from the data feeds and the data sources uh, into, uh, onto the desktop and into the apps. Uh, so that's a, a really, uh, will be a, an important step forward uh, for the solution. Yeah, I think that, that's one that we get a lot of, uh, when we talk to clients, is a lot of uh, conversations about, you know, as you get into more complex workflows, the, the back end needs to kind of interact with the, with the human beings, not just kind of passing instruments across. They want to do more and they need, they need more systems to talk to each other. So we're definitely seeing that as people get into the FDC3 kind of world and they start talking about, right, it's great, I can do this across the desktop. I also want to be able to get information somewhere that maybe isn't the desktop and I don't want to have to go through all that pain of formatting and APIs and it wouldn't be great if everyone spoke the same language, not just the desktop. So yeah, I think that's yeah. definitely a, a trend we're going to see. Yeah. Desktop agent bridging, right? So up front, I said that there were five uh, desktop agents. Uh, those are the public ones. There's a couple of firms that are actively building their own private desktop agents. Muzzle tough, good to them, right? I don't recommend it. <laughs> um, it's a lot of work. <laughs> We've uncovered a lot of challenges. There's a lot of man years uh, in our effort, not to mention our peers' efforts. Um, but, you know, listen, if you want to do that, that's great. But the point is, Let's say I am going to have uh, one of those desktop agents, or I'm going to have multiple desktop agents. Why can't I use all five and have those apps communicate on the desktop, right? That's where we need to get to. So the desktop agents need to be able to talk to each other. Um, so this is a big uh, challenge for, for FDC3, uh, and we'll need to enrich uh, all of our apps uh, to, to facilitate this. Um, you know, as I said, it's rising tide lifts all boats. There's a big enough pool out here that we can all play. We don't need uh, to, to own the space. Of course, you know, love to own the space, but that's, that's uh, not, not, not a reality. Um, and we need to make sure, Gab mentioned this uh, in, his, in his opening this morning. Um, we need to, to build out some conformance tools, right? So we need to know that when uh, somebody raises their hand and says, yes, I built my app using FDC3, that what did they actually do? Um, we need to know that when the desktop agents say this is an FDC3 desktop agent, we need to validate that it's doing, the, it's passing the intents correctly, that it's, sending the, uh, that it's sending the intents correctly to create an action, that it's passing the context data correctly. Uh, so it needs to, to pass this information, and the app's the same thing. This is going to uh, require some, some work. Uh, Rob uh, was talking about it this morning as well. Um, so this is a, a major area to go forward with, uh, with FDC3 uh, as a community, right? We're all going to have to participate in this conversation uh, to really drive the standard and get the most out of it because that's when it becomes plug and play. And you want to be able to, to look up that list of, on the FDC3 uh, website, see all the apps that are there and go, oh, that one's interesting. Good. Pull it down, get their app D and plug it in and it works, right? That's what it needs to do. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the vision. That's where we need to go. Um, and uh, I think that pretty well yeah. uh, wraps us up. Um, so we have some time for some questions and answers. Um, so you mentioned uh, using FTC3 on the back end. Um, hmm. Things, and it's also you know, very much written in pencil. Um, but do you not think you're going to really struggle to get adoption on the pricing side of that? I think, the yeah, I think we have to be careful when we say pricing. I guess I'm not talking about equity pricing uh, or so liquid you, products. You this is more... Yeah, imagine this is this is more in the kind of structured products where it's almost like a conversation, but it's a machine to human or that's... Yeah, streaming prices, yeah, not FDC3, I don't think that's it. I was going to say, it seems that, uh, yeah. you know, 
we've got a solution or, for that. Maybe right. it's not perfect, but we, yeah, we right. don't want to go reinvent or, or retrieving content from your, from your trade database, right? Yeah. All, all of that stuff, right? Uh, or your news database. These things could all be done. Right? Let's think about the broad spectrum of types of data. More questions, yes? What was the workflow to integrate your innovation mm -hmm. Oh, how we how we work together to, to work this um, to, to make it uh, available for the community. so I think we probably uh, over what, a couple of months I guess we were yeah. talking about how this would work because it was the first time for symphony to really integrate into FTC 3 I think we're we've talked about it but I think we're actually going down that path now and we've got the integration with uh, Finsomble and glue 42 and we're working with open fin as well so all the big um, three desktop agents uh, and and as Eugene said there's not a standard way that you interact with all, all three, which is one of the things that would be nice if right. there's a standard way to do it. So it's kind of conversation there, a conversation there, a conversation there, and then working with the developers to agree on how we actually um, get Symphony to talk to that agent. The FTC3 context, like we said, there were some changes we needed to make. There were additions, I should say, not changes. Uh, but really, um, yeah, it wasn't a huge no, amount. Yannick's here from our engineering team. It wasn't <laughs> a huge amount of work, was it, Yannick? It was, no, Reasonable. I, I was going to say it's actually very easy, right? If we take the example of um, the things we want to move forward on, like being able to share rich text, maybe with some images, maybe with some tables, stuff like that, it's literally been the case of opening an issue on the GitHub repository, talking about it with Chris, discussing it at one of the bi-weekly or monthly meetings, and then I've got to write the pull request next week, yeah. and that'll be done. Yeah. It's Really and, and going forward, you know, as Symphony deploys applications, they're going to be leveraging the FTC3 standard. So anybody who uses Symphony is going to be able to plug right into a desktop agent that's, that's built for FTC3. All right, I'm, come back to you. Uh, you know, it's, quite frankly, we've, w no, we have not had that conversation that I'm aware of. Um, maybe Chris knows, but um, it is surprising that they have not picked up and paid attention to this initiative. Um, it, <laughs> yeah, um, but but not not that I'm aware of. Um, you know, we we haven't had those conversations. Um, no, no. Oh, I'll, I'll come. What was, did you have a comment? Just in response to uh, this gentleman's comment there, I was thinking the same thing about Excel as well. So, unless the products are not necessarily specific to Excel, I yeah. thought that the web version of the community is just so many of our users use Excel. Yeah. Well, so, so in, in Finsemble, you can wrap uh, an app, a native app, uh, and it uses, puts it in an electron container and it can live inside the Finsemble desktop and move and behave, right? Uh, and then uh, there are solutions, um, David is here from I Push Pull, right, where uh, to facilitate the data transfer uh, from one app to another, right? Uh, so Excel can play uh, in this environment and, and we work quite closely with David and his team uh, at I Push Pull to, uh, to facilitate that. So Excel can play um, and uh, we have uh, Allison in the back from Google uh, who thinks they have a solution to compete with Excel. <laughs> and we would love to get that uh, fully operational into the smart desktop. Um, so um, I, I don't know that my finance guy would agree yet, but, you know, we'll get there. <laughs> um, you got a question? Yeah, just why this focus on Symfony? Because we know that the majority of the traders mm -hmm. on Bloomberg talk. Mm. Any ambition to any ambition to expand to Bloomberg? Sorry? IB Chat. IB Chat. Well, I can't speak for Bloomberg. Uh, I used to work there for 12, as did Eugene. So, uh, My yeah. boss. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know what their, what their plans are. I mean, obviously, their business model in the past has been the kind of walled garden model, which I think uh, is not kind of the direction of the industry. 
I would expect that they're going to have to do something to interact with yeah. this kind of open API. They're doing some work, but I'm not sure how far they're going to go. I think that's probably a question for them to Bl answer. Bloomberg has a solution called Terminal Connect. Yeah. Um, we interface with Terminal Connect so that we can have a bi-directional conversation with uh, the Bloomberg application. Um, there's a plug-in, you go into the SDD, and it says uh, add Bloomberg, and you put in your code, or this is coming out in a version in probably August, um, and uh, you'll be able to use Bloomberg. IB Connect is what they're dreaming of. Um, uh, I think it's more than a dream, it's more they continue to sort of put their toe in the water and figure out. Um, happy to chat with you afterwards and introduce you to the right people at Bloomberg. Uh, to um, give them a kickstart. Not that Rob and my friends here are going to be excited about that, but... <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we would. <laughs> um, yeah, could be, right? Um, so, you know, it's, it's in play, I guess, is the, is the right they, they answer. They to be, they're opening up their APIs, but very restricted. Yeah, they're, they're you know, it's, it's Bloomberg, right? You know, um, it's like moving the London Wall. You do it one brick at a time. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's right. That's right. So, you know, um, but they are recognizing that, that they do not uh, own the space, right? I, I think really that it, it comes back to, and I think we'll, we'll wrap on this point, right, uh, is, you know, that was the era, you know, tw 15, 20, 25 years ago, right, was you had to build everything, right? You had to build all of the apps. And Tom Secunda, our boss, mm -hmm. right, uh, would you know he would rap on the product team right he raps on everybody <laughs> you know but he would beat us up and say you know you guys suck we're the second best at everything the only reason we're so successful is because we have everything right and you know what he was right but you know we were competing you know whatever products we were building there was whole companies competing against that single product Bloomberg had everything so you can't be the best at everything right well we see with FTC 3 and we see in a smart desktop is that opportunity to build a best of breed solution, right? Let the traders, let the analysts, let the risk managers, let the ops people figure out what the best solutions are that they need, right? You guys are all building apps. Let's go sell them, right? And let's allow them to plug and play together and build that solution that, that uh, uh, pushes back uh, against the uh, uh, industry leaders of, of Refinitiv and, and Bloomberg and uh, anyone else uh, who's, who's older than that. Yes. Um, I think uh, that's actually a perfect segue uh, to, to uh, what's next is FTC 3 2.0. So this was the warm-up act uh, for Chris and Rico. <laughs> um, and I will, I will let them uh, handle that question. But, uh, you know, using the, the workbench uh, gives you a tool to do that, looking at the standard uh, and migrating your APIs. But um, if, uh, if we have anything else, all right, we'll take... Yeah, you're still going to run into all of those procurement and security hurdles to install an app. Um, it's what we run into. We uh, at Cosaic, both of our apps are desktop apps, and so they don't talk to a back end, um, or they communicate through a back end, but there's no back end that, that, that is open uh, to, to the public. Um, so we tend to, to go through pretty easily. But any, any app that is does have a back end, you're still going to run into those same uh, sorts of hurdles. It doesn't, it doesn't yet solve that problem. Um, what it does is it simplifies your go-to-market time, um, uh, your time to value once you've got that app approved and installed on the desktop. Um, and we'll deploy it, right? If Ensemble does, uh, or any of the desktop agents can deploy uh, the, the solution. Um, it's part of what the technology is. Um, uh, and, then, uh, and then it will plug and play. So. We've got the lady with the red light saying stop. Right. All right. We're over time. <laughs> we can, we'll follow up later. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone.